Hello and uh, welcome you all uh, to uh, today's uh, class. Uh, last class we looked at some aspects of uh, Claisen rearrangement, particularly we looked at the Eschen-Moser Claisen rearrangement which involved conversion of an allyl alcohol to gamma delta unsaturated amide. We also looked at Bellus Claisen rearrangement where reactions of allyl ethers allyl amines and allyl thioethers with ketenes were discussed which led to the formation of the corresponding gamma delta unsaturated esters amides and thioesters respectively we also looked at heteroclasin rearrangement both involving nitrogen and sulfur and also we saw some interesting reactions of uh, thiobase rearrangements like this starting with a thio salt like this if we treat this with butyl lithium we generate this anion which undergoes an interesting rearrangement to cleave this carbon sulfur bond and make this carbon carbon bond to get this interesting thioketal based uh, compound finally we looked at chen map rearrangement which is also known as 3,3 phosphor immediate rearrangement or stodinger claisen reaction this involves the rearrangement of this three phosphor imidate in 3,3 three, uh, phosphor imidate rearrangement which is like a Claisen rearrangement in which we start with an allyl alcohol and form the corresponding allyl amine uh, by the rearrangement of the double bond from here to here with the formation of a carbon nitrogen bond here finally leading to the product like this. So today we look at another rearrangement which is called as deuteronic Claisen rearrangement and again as we saw last time that when we did the ketene based reactions the reactions took place at room temperature and here also we will see that the reactions take place at room temperature or below. Thus for example if we take uh, an allyl amine of this kind and react with an acid uh, halide like this in the presence of a Lewis acid like trimethyl aluminum and of course uh, potassium carbonate as a base in chloroform at zero degrees what is uh, formed eventually is uh, this particular kind of product now what is believed that uh, this particular allyl amine interacts with the uh, acid halide in this particular fashion because there is a nitrogen carbon bond formation between this nitrogen and this uh, carbon uh, to lead to such an intermediate where the Lewis acid is interacting with the oxygen. Then we of course can expect under basic conditions to form the corresponding enolate of this kind which can be written up in this particular uh, fashion and of course this transition state which is a six member transition state then allows a rearrangement of uh, uh, Claisen type and since it is all along involving a deuterion therefore it is called as deuterionic Claisen rearrangement and this rearrangement leads to the formation of this particular product here uh, which can be written up in this particular fashion. Now depending on uh, different kinds of substitutions and the number of substitutions one can get uh, different kinds of products like in but this particular case we have started with this uh, particular um, double bond being trans and therefore we have uh, uh, got a product of this kind which is an anti product but one can take different kinds of substitutions and get uh, different kinds of products sin or anti and variously substitute it. So this is a variation of the ketene based uh, reaction. Of course you can put as many substituents as, as they are allowed. Now we have another uh, reaction which is uh, chromium trioxide based reaction which is somewhat um, similar to what we have earlier discussed. It is a kind of uh, is a type of Claisen rearrangement as you can see that uh, one can expect uh, this uh, this thing to happen in this in this way 
and of course once this happens then you can expect the oxidation to take place something that we have already discussed earlier. Now uh, uh, this is uh, something that one can think about as, as an e known transposition that means if we take a substrate of this uh, kind here and, and react it with uh, RMGBR, RMGBR or RLI or RLI then we can expect the uh, R group to attack and form the corresponding uh, tertiary alcohol which when reacts with pyridinium chlorochromate uh, this is what is going to be intermediate and that undergoes uh, as you can see it is a, it's a kind of uh, Claisen type rearrangement and then of course uh, you can get this intermediate which, which of course undergoes uh, oxidation to form this. So this is a one three enone transposition with an additional uh, group with additional group attached at the position where the carbonyl group with additional group or substituent or substituent. So uh, uh, this uh, this kind of reaction can be made use of it. Say for example, if an in the in the examination or as an home assignment, if I give a transformation to be carried out like this to this, then we have to think about it that how are we going to go. There can be of course several ways by which uh, one can uh, think about it. But one of the ways that one can anticipate that is that if in case we are in a position to cleave this because we have to bring here a double bond and of course an R group here. So R group can easily come if we can convert this into the corresponding uh, ketone by cleaving. So suppose if you do ozonolysis here and cleave it here so you can get the corresponding ketone. And now if we add here R, R Li or R MgBr and of course this is a symmetrical molecule so it does not matter there are two methylene groups here, two methylene groups here. So it does not really matter which direction the elimination goes. But what we would get is uh, we can attach the R group here, get the corresponding tertiary alcohol here and then we can do the dehydration. But we will not get the extra double bond here and also how do we get the corresponding carbonyl group here. So this is uh, something, it's something, it is an exercise that is important to look at it. However, we, we, if we can convert this particular ketone which is a symmetrical ketone, so if we are in a position to convert this into uh, something like this which we have already studied earlier that we can convert a ketone into an alpha beta unsaturated ketone by uh, using sulfur based chemistry or even by selenium based chemistry. So we can introduce sulfur here at this particular position or selenium make sulfoxide or selenoxide and then we can bring the corresponding double bond here. The moment double bond is brought in here that means there has to be a thought process that allows you to think that okay I will convert this into this if I convert into this into this then of course I can easily convert this into this by following that chromium based oxidation. So you have here RLI followed by uh, say PCC base oxidation. So this is how the 1 in 3 enone transposition can be carried out. So what it simply means that from your uh, home assignments and later on from the examination point of view uh, one can give different types of uh, uh, starting materials. Uh, for example here instead of giving this uh, double bond here which becomes relatively easy to uh, kind of uh, anticipate that how the ketone will come one can even think about putting here an OH here. So if uh, OH is put here then that means that one can convert this into the uh, now the moment you start thinking about it there could be the many different ways by which you can do it. However in, if you convert this into to autosylate and do the elimination here from this particular position you get the double bond here. So you can convert this into uh, the uh, olefin and then you can carry it out. Alternatively of course you can convert this into the corresponding aldehyde and then think uh, alternative ways of converting this into the final product 
say for example, if we have something like this. So, it is not necessary that you have to stick to uh, what has been uh, specifically given uh, talked or discussed in the in this particular course. However, as long as the uh, procedures are correct, so they, there is no problem. But I thought that we can start with this and convert directly into the olefin here, then you cleave the ketone, then we go further. In a similar fashion, you can start with this alcohol to the corresponding enone. It is very obvious that we take the corresponding uh, um, ketone by oxidation of this particular alcohol here. And once we get the corresponding alcohol, then uh, once we get the corresponding ketone, then we are in a good shape to uh, convert that into uh, this particular intermediate or the product that we are anticipating here. So, uh, it is just a kind of extension of uh, how this rearrangement can be in exploited in organic synthesis. Now, we have another very interesting uh, rearrangement which is also uh, uh, related to the um, kind of Claisen rearrangement type is called uh, Overman rearrangement or aryl trichloroacetamidates to allyl amines. So, it is uh, very similar to uh, what we uh, saw using Staudinger type of reaction or chain map rearrangement where we have an allyl alcohol here and uh, this allyl alcohol is converted to the corresponding allyl amine where the same situation is there uh, in, in a uh, inverted way that is rearranged way the amine goes into the or not to the carbon where there is a double bond. It is done in the presence of this trichloroacetonitrile. This trichloroacetonitrile is a very interesting uh, molecule which is uh, somewhat like this and that uh, the three chlorine groups here pull electron density onto this carbon and therefore from this carbon and therefore this carbon is fairly electrophilic. In the presence of a base like sodium hydride when an anion is formed here the anion attacks onto this triple bond and you form this what is called as trichloroacetamidate. This is what is acetamidate. This is is imidate. It is a kind of uh, uh, trichloroacetamidate. And now as you can see you have 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So, you have a 3, 3 sigma tropic type of rearrangement taking place and if this immediately undergoes rearrangement upon heating and it forms this particular substrate which can be hydrolyzed and the amine can be formed. So, it is a very interesting uh, reagent or, the, or, the, or a substrate which can be utilized in the synthesis of this molecule. Now, I am showing an interesting example here where we take uh, say for example, a 1,2 diol and this 1,2 diol with defined stereochemistry here. Uh, if we treat this with uh, trichloroacetonitrile, uh, so uh, if we use more than two equivalents of trichloroacetonitrile, so both the alcohols would get converted into the corresponding uh, trichloroacetamidate. Uh, so, we can think about having this substrate uh, as one of the intermediates and then what we have is, is uh, uh, double bond here and now the first reaction that will occur is obviously uh, this one coming in here, this coming in here and this coming in here. So, that gives the uh, first uh, rearrangement where we can write something like this and then what will happen we transform this into say you have NH CO C Cl3 and then you have an R1 here. Now, this has been a uh, particular uh, allyl alcohol and there is a homo allyl alcohol. Now, that has been converted into an allyl amine and also now it is an allyl alcohol which is now in the form of trichloroacetamide. So, this undergoes secondary arrangement as you can see here and of course, then we can expect that you have a product which is somewhat like this.
this is C C L 3. C O C L 3, it should be C C L 3. So now if we uh, hydrolyze it by means of uh, sodium hydroxide or, or potassium hydroxide, one can get the corresponding Now in this uh, reaction as you can uh, easily appreciate that the uh, geometry of the OH group is uh, converted to the corresponding amine same is here. So in the final product that we get the, the geometry is reflected into the final product but except that the position of the hydroxy group has been changed and uh, eventually the amine comes at a carbon which is on the other side of the double bond. So we get uh, we start with a vicinal diol which is a vicinal uh, diol and uh, we get the vicinal diamine but with a uh, stereochemistry is well defined. So this is a very interesting uh, Overman rearrangement which is uh, extremely useful in, uh, in organic synthesis. Now we have something called as uh, Bamford, Stevens and Shapiro reactions. Although uh, they are not directly uh, C C bond forming reactions but uh, in at the first look but then uh, it, they build a case to make C C bond formation. So for example if you start with the ketone and convert that into uh, a uh, tosylhydrazone. So if we have a ketone of this kind and convert this into a, a tosylhydrazone and then treat with sodium methoxide and heat it in a protic solvent then we get a, a, an olefin. Now in protic solvent it proceeds via carbonium ion but on the other hand if it is uh, a protic solvent then what happens is it proceeds via a carbene reaction. So let us see the mechanism how this happens. This is the tosyl hydrazone when it is treated with sodium methoxide and heated in a protic solvent like methanol. First there is a deprotonation of this hydrogen because that is directly attached to the nitrogen here. And then there is a lone pair of electron pushing it and finding forming this kind of uh, diazo species which then loses uh, the, uh, the negative charge from here moves and that takes the proton from the solvent, this is solvent, HS is actually a solvent. So you have a methanol, so methanol will give you a proton from here and methoxide will come here. And then once that happens this loses from here and generates a positive charge because this positive charge and of course there will always be a negative charge here whatever the negative charge is uh, that methoxide for example in this case it will be methoxide ion. So uh, this positive charge or the charge species is possible because of the polar solvent. So the polar solvent allows uh, the formation of this particularly par charge species and then you have a, a loss of proton from here to form the corresponding olefin. On the other hand if it is uh, a protic solvent then what is uh, proposed is that this particular intermediate then breaks directly from here and since there is a negative charge uh, at this particular part that means the uh, moment this particular uh, diazo compound comes in this can be written up in this fashion. And therefore at this stage when this nitrogen is lost. So instead of this negative charge taking up a proton from the protic solvent since protic solvent is not present here this particular carbon nitrogen bond breaks the, and then you lose nitrogen from here and then you generate a carbene. And then this carbene could be written up in this fashion with uh, proper substituents around here, here 
like this and then there is a migration of the hydrogen and eventually forming a double bond like this. So these are uh, two different Bamford-Stevens reactions which are uh, essentially uh, done in two different solvents and they give the you know, olefins and the uh, geometry of the olefin also is somewhat uh, influenced by which path the reaction proceeds. Now of course in these cases the thermodynamically more stable products generally form. Now what is Shapiro reaction? The Shapiro reaction is an extension of Bamford-Stevens reaction which is uh, uh, done in a solvent like THF or ether and you use two equivalents of butyl lithium. Now if we take uh, a, a tussle hydrazone of this type and use two equivalents of butyl lithium, we expect to form a dianion of this kind because the butyl lithium will deprotonate this NH proton here and also deprotonate the hydrogen which is here to form this kind of dianion which uh, will then allow uh, the removal of the tosylate by the formation of this carbon nitrogen double bond and movement of this uh, double bond to this particular part of the molecule where N double bond N is formed. Now this particular anion can undergo expulsion of uh, nitrogen to form this uh, vinyl lithium and this vinyl lithium can react with uh, different kinds of electrophiles to form uh, this kind of vinylated product. If uh, EX happens to be a dimethyl formamide of this kind which is also uh, known as NN dimethyl formamide then the anion can react onto this carbonyl carbon and expel eventually this dimethyl amino part to form the corresponding vinyl aldehyde. Now this is what is Shapiro reaction. So basically starting with a, a tosyl hydrazone we can generate a vinyl anion and then introduce any electrophile that we want to react with. How do we make use of it in a conversion like this? For example, if we take this aryl alcohol and we want to convert into this particular olefin, then how do we go about it? One of the ways is of course is to oxidize this alcohol to the corresponding ketone which is now an alpha beta unsaturated ketone. And since at the end of the uh, double bond we have a phenyl group here for example, therefore we can react it with lithium diphenyl cuprate which will allow a Michael addition of the phenyl uh, part to get this particular product which can be reduced to the corresponding alcohol and this alcohol under acidic conditions should undergo dehydration to form this double bond on this side because this is conjugated with the phenyl ring. Of course one can expect a double bond to be formed on this side but major product should form on this side. So from this ketone one can get to this particular olefin in two steps the reduction followed by dehydration. Other possibilities by using Shapiro reaction. So if we take this ketone and make the corresponding tosyl hydrazone and then react with two equivalents of butyl lithium then since this proton which is benzylic as well as alpha to the carbonyl group therefore this side deprotonation will occur and eventually we would get vinyl lithium of this kind which can then simply by protonation lead to the formation of this type of olefin the target molecule. So this is how these reactions occur. So we will stop it here today and take up the other aspects of uh, such reactions uh, where CC bonds, uh, CC bond formation occur and therefore uh, we will uh, take those uh, other uh, examples in the next class. Till then uh, take care and bye.